Hello and welcome to Fire Walk With Us, a Twin Peaks podcast. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. And Justin. And this week we're talking about the episode, Dispute Between Brothers. What brothers? The Mayor Brothers. Oh, those brothers. <laughs> yes, the mayor and his brother grew into the news. Right, that wedding that was so important or something. <laughs> yeah. The one that happens every year. Yeah. <laughs> or season. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, before watching this episode, I thought it was going to be a case with uh, Ben Horn and his brother and be like, oh boy, is there going to be some crazy with this? And then they brought in the mayors and I was kind of like, what? Apparently they have a big dispute or something. Yeah, they've had a dispute for like 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> Feud. Anyway. I object. <laughs> okay. Uh. I'm going to uh, give a pl- uh, quick plot synopsis. So, <clears throat> three days after Leland's death, following his confession to have killed Laura Palmer while under the control of the evil spirit Bob, Sarah tries to adjust herself to this turn of events with Cooper's consolation. As Cooper prepares to leave Twin Peaks, with the Laura Palmer case now closed, a new twist comes when Roger Hardy, an agent with FBI Internal Affairs and a Canadian Mountie named Preston King, show up where Cooper gets suspended by the FBI for his unauthorized actions in Canada. And Mountie King reveals that Cooper's rescue of Audrey Horn from one eye Jacks ruined a sting arc operation the RCMP set up to arrest Jean Renault, in which drugs were, uh, in which the drugs used were found in Cooper's car. Meanwhile, Norma's mother, Vivian, leaves town after revealing that she is the M.T. Wentz that everyone is talking about, and the one responsible for the bad review of the Double R Diner. Hank t- uh, also takes Ernie Niles to One-Eye Jacks, where they meet with Sean Renault, who wants them to traffic some cocaine for him. Elsewhere, Big, and, Big Ed and Dr. Jacoby persuade the vice principal of Twin Peaks High School to enroll Nadine as a student to satisfy her delusion that she's still in high school. Also, after Bobby unsuccessfully tries to blackmail the distraught Ben Horn with the incriminating tape of him talking to Leo, Audrey gives Ben or gives Bobby some advice about how to confront her father. Mm. So I've left out a few things that happen. A couple little things. Yeah. The first big thing that you did mention: this is the first time we've actually gotten a decent time skip. Yeah, because there hasn't been one really. Yeah. Prior to this, every episode had been one day. Yeah, mm-hmm. now it's been a three-day time skip. Yes. So, man, things are changing for the difference. Okay, so Maybe. early in this episode, um, Major Briggs asks Cooper if he wants to go fishing with him. Yes. Specifically yeah. at night. Um, and then yeah. later we see Cooper, and he has, like, the fishing vest and everything. I think he also has a fishing hook thing. Yeah, I think that he has a hat. Had, that the sheriff gave yeah. him and he pinned it on. But here's my question. Why does he have fishing gear with him? He could have gotten it from one of the stores around Twin Peaks. I guess. But Either that or the major gave him some stuff to work with. Or he maybe he planned to at some point. I don't know. <laughs> he was going on a murder investigation. He's like, well, I, I managed to fish. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, knowing Cooper, that, that might be a possible investigation technique. <laughs> uh, we get another reference to Wyndham Earl. Yes. Uh, Bobby goes on a quote unquote job interview. Oh, that's uh, a really job interview. Despite the fact that he's working in certain respects to try and get ahead in life, I still can't stand Bobby. Just, oh my god, Bobby. Apparently, Leo moved a bit. Yes. Was yeah. it really the case, or is it just. Well, we saw her? the wheelchair move. Yeah. Did. Was it really? Or was it just something within the house? It's still kind of being nah, expected for things. Leo move. Yeah, we've seen Leo move before. Mm. New shoes. Uh, we get reference to a guardian angel. Ugh. Yes, from Catherine. Well, Catherine. Yes. Who's most likely making it up on the spot. I highly doubt it. We all know mm. Catherine. But is she? I highly doubt it. Mm. Okay. I. So, we get a Mountie in this. Yes. And I have a problem. Because of the one typical thing, or the other thing? What's wrong with the RCMP? Nothing. The problem I have is his uniform. It's too red. Or what? He's in a dress uniform the entire fucking time! When's the last time you saw a Mountie in full dress uniform? I don't know. Like, parades or something? Yeah, they don't wear that when they go to arrest people. (laughs) Um... They wear that for, like, parades and the yes. changing of the guard at uh, Parliament Hill. 
they do not wear that every day on the street. He yeah, no. supposedly doesn't? No. I think when he speaks with Jean Reno at one Eye Jacks, he's not in it. I don't know, but for a lot of the episode, he is in that red uniform, and it just... No, that would not happen. Anyway. But how else will people who don't know what Mounties are would know if he's a Mountie? They could just say he's a Mountie. Do you honestly think enough people will have the attention span to honestly think that every character has that sort of thing? Hey, at least you can tell he's a Mountie, because he's We're dressed s- like what would, would be. Just give him a normal... Anyway, this... To the average audience, that's how people would see them. Oh, there's also the Andy, Lucy, and Dick subplot. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Cooper gets suspended on uh, suspicion of drug trafficking and a few other things. Yeah. Uh, so Cooper has to surrender his gun and badge. Dear sad. Basically the main reason why he's staying in Twin Peaks now. Well, yeah, one of them. Yeah. Uh, we get the reveal of who M.T. Wentz is so far. Uh, we find out that Jean Reno is responsible for framing Cooper, and Josie returns to uh, Twin Peaks. Yes. Cooper and Major Briggs are at a campfire in the woods, and Major Briggs makes reference to something called the White Lodge. Wah! And then uh, Cooper decides to go take a leak, and suddenly something... No, you you forgot something. We hear an owl hooting. Yeah, yeah, that was an owl hooting. He leaves to go take a leak, and there's an owl hooting. Yes. Yes. And then we see a flash of white light, and by the time Cooper gets back to the campsite, Major Briggs has vanished. Yeah. And that effect did not look like anything from the X-Files ever, by the way. <laughs> totally. Watching that one particular episode, yeah. It's the exact same effect. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. It is. So, what did you all think of this episode? Well, let's see. God damn it, Bobby. There was an actual time skip. Why are we focusing on these mares? Why is there any sort of importance relating to this? Yeah, so the mayor and his brother who owns the newspaper have a bit of a feud going on. Bleh. Oh, and the one mayor is marrying some, like, 20-year-old. Mm. And it's... Ooh, also, Cooper yeah. plot. Cooper story. Okay, what do you what do you mean? Uh, Audrey goes to see Cooper, and she's like, oh, you leaving sadness. And yeah. he's like, you want to know why all the particular things affect me in these sorts of, sorts of ways? Yeah. And then he gives him a story, and then it's like, oh. Yeah, but a witness he was protecting that got killed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then drove his partner insane. Yes, and that partner was Wyndham Earl. Yes. Dun-dun-dun. Uh, dun-dun-dun. Now, it wasn't really so much dun-dun-dun until the other particular thing. Which I don't think is until later, but I can't remember specifics with episodes. Okay. okay, so what did you learn in this episode? They're bouncing into a whole bunch of lot more side plots things until there's other particular little points of important things. There's something also, else they showed woods. the fan. Oh well, yeah, the fan was there. Yeah. But yeah, there's something else in these woods. There is something in the woods. So we get our first real reference uh, to the White Lodge in this. Blah. So what do you think the White Lodge is? Mm-hmm. Something supposedly related to the Velvet Room, but yeah, no. again, I'm not really sure. It would have nothing to do with Persona. It's like, or, this predates no. it by like at least ten years. No, Red... Red Bad Kurt, Justin referencing Red, Persona. He Red, did it first. Red Curtain Room. My apologies. Words came out a little bit too quick. You reference any more of that anime bullshit and I'll smack you. He referenced it first, not me. <laughs> anyway, um, that was my train of thought. <laughs> but yes, there's a white lodge or something. Yes, and there's also a black lodge. To, uh, yeah, as we've learned, not in this episode, but um, so this could refer to aliens. I don't know. Ooh, it might be now aliens. There's... Maybe. Okay. Now the supposed important point. Another item to add to the list of things to keep an eye out for: earrings. Okay, earrings. Yes. The wife of Leland said that Leland had a talent for finding her earrings. Okay. Yeah. That is true. So. I kind of missed that point. What. Uh, do either of you have any questions for me after this episode? Does Major Briggs make a return? Yes. Okay. Then I don't know. <laughs> what else to say, really? Could be about anything. 
I mean, I won't ask specifics on his return, but I mean... I wouldn't give you specifics on his return. Exactly. Will there be any importance to the green butt skunk? I don't believe so. Uh, Not that I can remember, at least. No. Well, yeah, it was kind of a gift or something for him? Yeah, it's something that uh, Truman gave to Cooper. All right, so this is the first episode after we have the reveal of who killed Laura Palmer. Yeah, so that subplot is now over, or that main plot. Aside yes. from the couple little points being like, oh, damn, God, I'm there! But, nah, as it is, there hasn't been any sort of definitive little point of being like, oh, dear God, blah, blah. Well, other than Major Briggs kind of vanishing, it's kind of, uh... I honestly think it was more of the starting stuff of the owl and the mild camera movings and forest things. So where do we think the show is going from here? Because yeah. we've solved the murder of Laura Palmer. Yes. It's kind of another wonderful case of, you know all the particular peoples, we've got to build some stories and drop them little tiny hints of things, and then it's going to build up that tension until it gets to a wonderful point again, and it's going to wham it in the face and be all crazy like last time. Don't worry. Maybe, but we'll see. Paul's trying to explain something to me, and for whatever reason, I just want yeah. to hit myself in the face. <laughs> yeah. So, some things are going to happen. Um, as you can tell, we're going to get a little bit more supernatural. Nah, yeah, just a tiny bit with the Major disappearing. Yes. Uh, we are going to start hearing a lot more about the Lodges. Yes. And eventually we will visit the Lodge. <sighs> but that's not going to be for a little while. Oh, okay. I guess the only other one particular thing that came to mind is... But I don't think we saw the Log Lady. Is Log Lady going to be coming back in importance? Oh, yes. Is she going to be visiting the places too? Lo- the, the Log Lady will be important throughout the rest of the series. I'm sure she will. Yeah. Like, even in season three. Well, she kind of lives in the woods, so, I mean, of course she'll be important. Well. And she kind of talks to logs. She does. Well, she talks to her log. Yeah, okay. Which basically knows everything. Well. Whatever it sees. She's, like, some kind... She's some kind of psychic. We don't know if it, you know, it's the log or what's going on there exactly. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what did you all think of the show up to the point when Laura is revealed? Laura's killer. Yeah, Laura's killer. An interesting experience thus far. I mean, we've seen Bob, the reveal of that. Yep. Yeah. And of Mike. Yeah. Yes, and of Mike, which Mike returns, right? Yes. Okay. Mm. So will Bob. Okay. As it sort of sits, going through the series and seeing where those couple particular things, scenes that I saw of Twin Peaks before watching the series all the way through, sort of left me, yeah, I actually know what these scenes mean now. And actually watching the story and whatnot, man, it's turning out to be good. The show is going to get mo- uh, more like metaphysical. It's going to get more spiritual. Are you on board with that? Yeah, we'll see how it is. It could possibly go the route of that one thing, or could go the route of the other particular Japanese thing that I'd never mentioned to you because it would most likely drive you insane. I can com- I can probably compare this to maybe JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. At one point, it decides to um, switch from like a more physical combat to like an outer being combat. Oddly enough, like when it switches from part two to part three. Yeah. But I mean. I can see it getting crazy. It, and it, it will. Okay. It will. Uh, so, do either of you have any last minute thoughts? Andy has a decent idea of what to do for Lucy with all the particular stuff, but he's going about the wrong way. I just want to be friends, dick. <laughs> yeah, so the Andy-Lucy thing um, is going to continue. Yeah. Until the end of the season. I wouldn't be too surprised. Yeah. Well, and, and beyond that, but... Yes, uh, Andy and Lucy, it's going to it's going to be an interesting ride. Does somebody at the end got to get a well-deserved smack? You'll find out. Somehow Lucy's going to have twins or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll find out. Okay. Uh, so I think that's going to be it for this week. I'm Paul. Yeah, I'm Dave. And Justin. And that was Fire Walk with.